presented by Supreme Lending. News You Can Use offers timely information related to the housing and housing finance industry that we believe will benefit you and your customers. This is News You Can Use. Hey, good afternoon to all of you and welcome to News You Can Use. Um, I don't know who that Bridget gal was that just um, inspired all of us. I hope you felt the same way I did. Uh, this past weekend, obviously, a lot of us um, celebrated Easter a little bit different than we normally do. Um, we've been doing a lot of things recently that we don't normally do or different than we normally would. This past weekend, of course, was just um, a lot of people spending time um, just at home with their family, uh, maybe not even with their extended family that they would normally spend time with. And I thought a lot about what this is going to mean to all of us, because it is an event of our lifetime. What it's going to mean to all of us is it should, if we let it, it's going to remind us not to take anything for granted, because, of course, all the worries and concerns that we thought we had prior to this thing called coronavirus seem to have dissipated, because you can hardly think about anything but coronavirus and its impact. So rise up. That's what I would tell you. And, of course, that's very uh, much um, what we celebrated this past weekend, whether you're a Christian or not. Of course, for those who celebrated Passover recently, um, uh, it was a great, great celebration, I'm sure, for your families. For Easter, uh, for many of us, including myself, it was a great celebration. And in both cases, really kind of the idea is simple. It's about relationship, which is the most important thing in life. Right now, it seems like it's about jobs, and it is, and about selling houses and financing houses, and all those things are important, not to make them unimportant. It's just simply true, however, that in the end, when you really reduce life down to its most important concept, it's about relationships. And this past weekend, we celebrated love, the purest and amazing love ever, and that always includes uh, sacrifice, and if you have a meaningful long-term relationship at home or in the workplace, anywhere, it will always also include forgiveness because you'll have to put aside your differences with another, whether it's your spouse, significant other, or in the workplace even. And then finally, it's hope for, for something better, for better tomorrow. So um, we've gone through a lot already. If you think about it in the last four weeks, missed Passover, missed Easter, the way we normally celebrate it. Spring's already here in Atlanta, South Florida, you, you don't know the difference oftentimes between the seasons. Um, and then finally, you know, if you're from Georgia, and I am, of course, you know, the Masters is one of those, not golf tournaments. It's way bigger than that. Uh, it's for all of us here nationally. So let's move on. Mo news you can use. We created the program really to be a voice um, to our realtor partner friends uh, on the topic of real estate um, and housing finance. Um, and we, have, from time to time, we'll send out information. Of course, we decided recently with this event called coronavirus that it might be helpful because the, the, the characteristic of the event is dynamic. It's changing by the day, information flow, not only regarding coronavirus, but to a, um, a different point of view, it's also impacting our business on a dynamic event. So we just thought we would update you um, on Mondays, and we'll do so until which time that you stop watching or listening or until we don't think there's newsworthy information to share anymore. So um, let's kick it into gear. We've talked about since the beginning, this concept of road to recovery. Um, and I think because all of us want to know that we're going to recover, that's the hope issue, right? And so um, we said from the beginning that we thought Fed and monetary policy uh, Washington and fiscal policy and ultimately coronavirus and health policy itself would be kind of the fundamentals to keep an eye on. We don't change any of that here today. We uh, only celebrate the Fed's work. The Federal Reserve has been, as America's banker, it's been, in my humble opinion, amazing. And this article just kind of sums it up. It's on wartime footing. Um, and still may be asked to do more. It has done anything and everything at this point to make sure there's plenty of liquidity in our finance systems, our banking systems, and to create a sense of confidence for investors across every part of the business world. So I'm really, at this point, um, I'm grateful for what they've done because they, it's not going to create the recovery, but it was necessary to build a foundation so we could have a recovery. The second thing is we needed Washington to act. They did. 
Um, they generally act out. In this particular case, they acted for everyone and they really stepped forward with a um, fiscal um, uh, plan that was 2.1 trillion in size. They've covered a number of different areas. Actually, when you go through the details, with the exception of forbearance, which we'll get to in a few minutes, forbearance was a good thing in its general thinking in the bill, but it also creates some unintended consequences. But aside from that, the bill itself, whether it's for small employers or whether it's for individuals, it really speaks to um, the compassion of our country, which is really to recognize what's going on, to make sure that we can reach people who are in need. And of course, all of you know that we've been challenging each other to love thy neighbor, do our part as well, because we don't need to wait for the government to do some things. We can step in and do others. So we've got both the Fed at this point, and we've got Washington with fiscal policy and monetary policy, both taking action. In terms of coronavirus, the last couple of days, while the deaths have been climbing, um, we're reaching a point where I, I, you know, you rarely say that some of these folks have been um, sharing any optimism, but there is some cautious optimism, at least the way they're describing it now. And we're getting more of that information today that some of the actions that have been underway are in fact working. And this flattening concept now is starting to take hold. We're also hopeful that the weather may be able to play a role if it operates like a, um, a flu, that it might um, have less success in terms of transference as we get into the um, late spring and summer. Um, certainly there's an awful lot of work on vaccines and antivirals, all kinds of medicines that they're attempting to use to see if they can't find something that will uh, arrest it and keep it from causing death. Because that's the most important thing, in my opinion, for us to get a full recovery in the economy, everybody to be able to go back to business as usual. We're gonna need to know that you can go outside and that somehow, some way, if you catch coronavirus, um, it's not going to be uh, the end of your life. And of course that is, um, you know, with the flu, we all, you know, have gotten the flu before we get the flu, we get really sick. It's not fun. We stay home. We self quarantine, if you will, so that others don't get it. And then we get better and we know that. So it's different. That is coronavirus in that. Um, it's not that the flu doesn't kill anyone. It's just that this particular um, a virus is a, uh, appearing to be a lot more, of course, dangerous. So let's talk about reopening the economy, because I think that's the, the real deal. All that we've done so far is stop the slide from getting, that is, um, the economy slide from going deeper into a ditch. Um, it's definitely in a ditch. It's just a question, how do we get it back out? Um, and so that conversation will dominate the news this week, I'm sure. The president will continue to talk about his thinking on it, which I'm not quite sure what the details are about that. But it's kind of like one of those deals. When do we open it? Right. And there's a bunch of opinions. Don't go too early because then what happens if we have a relapse? Um, and then how do you do it? Do you just do it all at once? Well, of course, New York doesn't look like it's anywhere close to being in a condition like, for instance, Atlanta or even parts of our Florida markets or short, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, where we also do business. So. There's a lot of details that'll go into it. Sure, in the days ahead, I read a text a little while ago from um, someone from MIT, a smart scientist who was giving points of view about how it probably could happen. So I'm sure the president's getting an awful lot of opinion shared by an awful lot of really bright people. But here's the reason it's so important to get it reopened. Just make sure everyone hears the data. Um, we had the longest economic expansion in uh, history, the history of the United States in 130 months in a row, it's a little bit better than 10 years, just short of 11 years. Um, and it ended in March of this year. It would not have ended had we not decided to go into quarantine, but it did end. Um, and so during that period of time, we created 25 million jobs, two and a half million jobs per year, roughly right, during the expansion. We've lost 16 million. So we created 25 million, we lost 16 million in the last 30 days. So the numbers um, are just you know, astronomical. And the biggest propeller to an economic um, stability and growth is incomes. That's the single biggest idea. We can use stimulus as a way to substitute for a short period of time, but those 16 million jobs that are now no longer working, um, they're on kind of taxpayer um, payroll right now, as opposed to typical payroll, um, that they might otherwise be on. That is that is a big deal. And it's a big number that we've lost and that number continues to grow. So the longer we stay 
closed as an economy, the bigger that number gets and the longer then and more difficult the recovery is going to be. The Dow Jones Industrial is actually higher than it was. It, it's down now 25 plus percent, which is clearly in bear territory. We don't know if it is a bear market that's just started, but it definitely uh, we've lost trillions of dollars of wealth in our system. And finally, the uh, the GDP estimate that I saw most recently was at minus 40 percent to give you some idea when an economy is going really, really, really well. It's growing at three to four percent. Our economy, when it's growing really well, the GDP um, is about three to four percent. When you start looking at numbers like minus 40 percent, there's just nothing to base that on other than if someone told me that and I had been traveling for, I don't know, a while and had been away from the news, I would tell you a bomb went off someplace. And in fact, a bomb did go off. It's just called coronavirus. It's not another kind of bomb. So now let's move on to kind of the recovery. There are lots of opinions and no one really knows for sure, of course. Um, but what we do know is that the stock market does um, take into account forward thinking. So six to 12 months is generally how the stock market will will price itself. And in the last couple of weeks, as a result of what the Fed in monetary policy and what Washington, is, Washington has done in fiscal policy, and really some of the news around Corona, we've started to see a rebound in the last couple of weeks of, um, of the equity marketplace of companies um, and what they're valued at. And that really just takes into consideration that there's an expectation that we will get reopened and that when we reopen, business will start moving again. Um, so it has rallied some, which is, to me, makes me a bit optimistic that people are still thinking about the idea that there will be a recovery. The shorter we stay in this window closed, the better, uh, because it's psychological. I don't know about you, but cabin fever comes to mind, right? Um, but psychologically, the shorter, then we go back to like our habits, business as usual becomes easier to go back to. So shorter is better. Longer, is more cost um, to our country, more debt. And it's also psychologically wise, I think it's damaging. Just a longer, I've seen the mood get not as good. I only go out maybe once a week for, for groceries now, but the mood is, is just, it's different now. It's more somber now than it was just a couple of weeks ago. So uh, cabin fever will help because spring has come, but particularly if you don't live in South Florida, if you live here in Georgia or in the Carolinas, around the country that for that matter people have been holed up and it's been cold so spring is starting to come it's beautiful right in my backyard right now i mean the colors in the last week have just been amazing and changing and and that that brings a sense of optimism and hope with it right that that something better is coming from the winter time um and so i think that will benefit us but the sooner the better um, and then the rates that we dropped with the Fed and all the work that the Federal Reserve did and all the stimulus has a chance to go to work um, if we get out and open sooner the better. And I'm not a proponent of, of opening too soon so that we wind up losing the ground that we gained. Um, but I also will tell you that we've been from the very beginning fighting two problems, uh, coronavirus, obvious one. The other one that was not as obvious day one because we didn't have a choice was what was gonna happen in the economy and 16 million job losses. If you don't know somebody, you will by the time it's over that will have lost a job. So um, I'm really hopeful that the conversation getting started will bring about really good ideas about how we can safely re-enter opening parts of the economy so that we can get some optimism moving again and get um, this um, economy of ours on the road to recover. It's not quite out of the, uh, garage yet. We're hoping to get it out of there soon so we can get on the road and start recovering. I want to finally give you a couple of updates on the housing finance sector. Uh, we continue to see things happening there. I've mentioned forbearance a number of different times just to bring that topic up again. It was a part of um, the stimulus plan. It was the government's way of telling consumers that had government loans, FHA, VA backed loans, that they could forbear, they could get into a forbearance, which is really a negotiation, not to not have to pay, but to pay later um, so that they could add it back onto the loan or make a lump sum payment. So there's a lot of details that no one knew about with regard to forbearance, but there's a major um, request that has increased. And that forbearance requires servicers 
who actually service those FHA and VA loans, which is about 25% of all the loans that we do in our country, that, that requires them to advance the payments on behalf of their customers. It was an unintended consequence. The government did not think through whether or not that would be a problem, but it's creating liquidity cern concerns. And those concerns have played themselves out in two substantial ways. First, in the jumbo market, um, there's fewer investors that are buying jumbo loans. Um, the loan to values have been reduced. So if you could have gotten a 90% loan, now it's an 80% loan. If it was 80, now it's 75. And FICO score increases, even in jumbo loans have taken place to where if you could have gotten a 680, credit score, now it's up at 700 or higher in order to be able to, to get access to financing. FICO score in general is the big concern that I have as I think about the road to recovery for the housing market. And the reason I am concerned is FICO scores, just so that you know, you know, we were um, having scores around 620 be eligible still. There's a lot of detail on that, but most lenders were running around 620. Um, today, um, most lenders, there's no one still at 620. Most lenders have gone to at least 640. Many have gone to 660 and some have gone to 680. And in fact, over the weekend, uh, JP Morgan Chase, Chase Bank, which is the third largest mortgage company in the country, moved to 700, their credit score and their minimum loan to value. Minimum loan to value is 80%. So they require 20% down now. Uh, and a 700 credit score. By the way, if we went to 700 credit scores, 25% of the people who were financed, let me say that again, 25% of the people that were financed in calendar 2019 would not have been able to get financing. So it's a significant component of the market. And this issue that started with forbearance and then has underlying economic consequence um, is is, is creating some concerns for the recovery in housing and, I'm, and have been from the beginning hopeful that there will be a resolution and why? Because it's so logical that there should be a resolution because if not, everything the Fed has done and everything that Washington has done in terms of stimulus, the trillions of dollars that have been spent, a big part of the economy, housing is 30% of the total GDP in America. So housing is critical to the America economic recovery without housing getting on track, back on track. We're going to have a problem having a road to recovery be as, let's just say, safe and um, certain as otherwise. So this forbearance issue, I'll keep you up to speed on it. If I get any information between now and the next time we huddle, which will be next Monday, I will promise you I will share it with you. Um, so anyway, we're going to get back to uh, to FICO scoring in just a second. I did get an update this past week. I'll update you again next week. I hope to interview Doug Duncan, who's the chief economist with Fannie Mae. But last week when I talked to him, he talked about a 15% decline in housing this year. Um, if that was, um, uh, we were supposed to have a 2% increase, a 15% decline is a pretty big number, but that could be two months that we miss uh, or go to 50% of what we would normally have, let's say in in June, or excuse me, in May and June. If we go to 50% of what we would normally would have and you then normalize the rest of the year, you have a 15% decline. So um, he is expecting, however, all of those numbers to be made up over a 24 month period. So to the extent that he is forecasting 15% down this year, he's forecasting 15% up next year, which would have been much higher than he would have ever forecasted any individual year. So, so bottom line is, is that there's, there's, um, there's a forbearance issue. It's creating FICO issues, LTV issues. And if that issue can get into a place where it can get resolved, I think we're going to wind up um, in a much better place coming up here soon in terms of prospects for the road to recovery, specifically for housing. I want to talk to you a little bit about what's up at Supreme, if I could. Um, first of all, we have, of course, been offering an awful lot of continuing education classes for all of you as realtors. We understand um, that you still need continuing education. So we have uh, asked the state and have now received approvals for all of our states to do um, CE um, via Zoom like we're doing here for this meeting or like we've been doing for some of our other meetings. Of course, we're 
live with this as well through Facebook. But to the extent that we use um, uh, virtual as a way to do CE, we're going to do that. So stay tuned. We'll get you some additional updates so that you can, as realtors, continue to um, keep your license in good shape uh, and get some education that we think is valuable to have. Right now, particularly, I would tell you that number one focus is on credit. And with that in mind, I'm really, really, really excited. We have Lisa Myers, who was with Credit Technologies for 14 years, who's now a part of our organization. Uh, Lisa is and was one of the senior people in the country um, with Credit Technologies, one of the largest companies in the country in the credit business, particularly to the mortgage industry. Uh, and she's now part of our organization. She will be doing not only continuing ed training for you as realtors, but she's also going to start not this coming Friday, a week from this Friday, we're going to have call, it's going to be called Credit Essentials. We're going to have a 30 minute programs that you can invite as realtors, all of your customers that let's say are under 700, or under 680 that are in the uh, pre-approval process. And they can get a what you should do and what you shouldn't do to improve your credit score. Because even today, if we're doing 640s at Supreme and we are, if credit scores go up to 660, you don't want a contract to get lost and you don't want a customer who's in a pre-approval process right now to wind up being pre-approved and then they lose their pre-approval because the industry's credit scores are going higher. So what we think is important is Almost every single individual can improve their credit score by 25, 50, 75 points. 25 points without cost, uh, just by knowing what to do. And then on the margin, there's some minor things you can do to improve additionally to 50 or 75 points with, with credit. I would strongly recommend not only to the Supreme organization, which we've already done and done some training, but we would like to offer this to you as realtors to join us. Uh, uh, and we're going to start it, like I said, a week from this coming Friday. Um, we're going to be hosting them at noon so that if people are working, um, they can tune in during work. We feel like it's going to be a great program. Um, after your customers go to the program, they will be able to submit to get an individual roadmap from Supreme through one of your loan officers, one of your Supreme loan officers, so that we can give them back a very specific and individual roadmap, road to recovery, so they can improve their credit scores so that we'll have um, another buyer who could be in the market. Listen, at, at, at Chase today, it's 700. That's it, 20% down. At Supreme today, um, we're still at 640 uh, plus on credit scores, 3.5% down FHA lending. We're still doing a lot of the bond programs that we're doing. So as of today, we are still in business. But what we want to make sure of is for those high loan to value, low FICO score customers, which again is a pretty sizable amount of the business that you put under contract and you write and we write with you. We want to make sure we move their credit score here in the month uh, and two months ahead. We want those scores to go higher. So not only they get access to credit, but their cost of credit goes down. If you didn't know this, if you have a 640 credit score and you were to move it to 700, which is very doable, um, you will save on a $200,000 loan, you save $3,000 in financing costs, $3,000 in financing costs. So all you have to do is pay attention. So a half hour of your customer's time on our Credit Essential program, which again will uh, begin a week from this Friday at noon, run by Lisa Myers, uh, representing our organization. And then a follow-up with the LO so that we can give a personal roadmap to your customers as a part of their pre-approval process. We think it's going to really benefit um, so that you don't lose sales. When a market goes down 15%, you have nothing to lose. We're already in a negative category. We got to keep it as positive as possible. So we, the nation, get on a road to recovery. And you as realtors and we as your partners in the real estate business can be on the road to recovery together. That's what we want to do. And that's really what we do as an organization. Um, Supreme as an organization, uh, our mission is to serve others before self. We think about all of our constituents, both internal um, associates. We think about you as our realtor partners, about your customers. We think about the community and loving our neighbor. We want to basically live our lives in a way that's intentional and purposeful to add value to the lives of everyone that we're in business with. 
we don't do that to get business. The byproduct is we we do wind up doing well in our business as a result of it. But I think it's really just the idea of living our life a certain way. I want to remind all of you as well, because this is a big deal always, and now it's even a bigger deal. Uh, if you read the article that and you can, any of your loan officers can get you access to the article that we just shared with um, JP Morgan Chase. They're talking about two and three months to close mortgages, even when they're only doing 700 credit scores and 80% LTVs. A lot of lenders are backed up with refinances. So closing on time and funding on time, i.e. paychecks are important, getting paid on time. Um, we're at 99.8% over the last 30 days, which is absolutely positively the highest score we've ever had. We paid, we always pay attention to service details, but we have, and I'm really proud of our organization, they have upped their game uh, to make sure that in this time of challenge and stress, we really do everything, anything and everything that we possibly can do to, um, to make sure that we get your customers delivered and we get you delivered um, your pay on time. Uh, we also wanted to remind you we have the Supreme Rescue Service. So to the extent that your loan was in the pipeline over the weekend and 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 Chase just decided not to close it because its credit score is not high enough, uh, we expect a lot of the disruption that's been in housing finance as a result of coronavirus is going to create some deals that were doable and maybe aren't doable. So certainly the Supreme Rescue Service was developed and built so that you could get uh, your Supreme Loan Officer involved, let them get with our Supreme Help Desk, which are akin to the best doctors in the country in the loan business, the loan doctoring business. And they'll take a look at your um, circumstances, your customer circumstances, and we can give you back a point of view as to whether we can get things done. If we can, uh, which we oftentimes can, uh, our pathway is is generally, our road is very quick. We, we close an awful lot of those loans that are Supreme Rescue Service loans in eight days, um, we do them faster, but we can't. The government won't let us. Um, so that's really the update I wanted to give you today. I'm optimistic to some extent that we at least are starting to get uh, a bit of better news on coronavirus. There's still an awful lot out in front of us um, in terms of bad news over the next couple of weeks, particularly when the news starts getting better on corona now, the news at the same time on the economy is going to be getting worse. The good news is just like the coronavirus, um, there's going to be a flattening of that news because we're going to get back to work. So um, at some point coming up here, I don't know if it's two weeks or four weeks or six weeks, but um, we're going to get the lights turned back on in this country, at least it's parts of the country. And we'll start seeing better stories about the economy starting to, to get back to work again. I think that will in tow with the um, springtime and hopefully all the work that the Federal Reserve has done, the government has done so far, all that, and really just the spirit and optimism and hope that is America, that that animal instinct, if you will, will go alive and we'll go uh, back to, um, to being as normal as possible and get this economy cooking again. I want to thank you for spending your time with us today. Um, and I wanted to, Ty, do you have any questions you want to forward on or are we good? Yes, thanks a lot, Pat, here from the Supreme Man Cave Studios to keep this thing going. Everyone who's on uh, this meeting right now, if you'd like to ask a question, we have everyone muted just so it'll go smoothly. Um, if you use the raise your hand feature, we can call on you and you can ask your question. We do have a question that's coming in from the Facebook Live. And that is from Nadine August, who asks, if people get a forbearance, won't that affect their FICO scores? That's a great question. So the answer is um, most likely it will. The only way it won't is in the event that the government intervene. I don't think that they're going to do that. Um, just to make sure everyone is familiar, forbearance is simply a way to say that lenders need to give people the freedom to renegotiate their payments at these levels, and you cannot foreclose on them if they request you do that at that time. Now, down the road, if they go delinquent again, that will be um, kind of removed, but today it's a one-off, so it's not really forgiving. It's um, a different concept that's renegotiating, and so it'll be up to lenders, and if they have the freedom to not report it as a late, my guess is that they will do that. But I do think 
all this consequence if you go into forbearance, I, I think people should know the consequence. And one of the big consequences is quite frankly, if they get back to work and rates go down, which is expected to happen, they may not be able to refinance as a result of it if they've missed payments during this period of time. So I, to me, if this was a friend or family member, I, I really think long and hard before doing it because there are a number of unanswered questions, including the one you just asked, with regard to FICO scores. So if I get, and when we get as an industry, more information specific to forbearance, uh, because it has been slow to come, um, like most of these programs, they create the program, they had to do it in a hurry, they get it out, and then you realize there's some detail that needs to get ironed out, and there's some consequences maybe that aren't so good that, that, um, that come along with it. And we're still, of course, early on in the process of trying to distill all of those things. So that was a very good question, by the way. All right. I don't see no one has raised their hand. We do have in the chat, Eamon Heiser asking, will there be a flyer to share their consumer credit course? It's offering on the 24th. I'll go ahead and answer that for you. We don't do anything without creating flyers or social graphics or all those things. So the marketing team will be hard at work to make sure that you guys can, uh, the loan officers on here can share this with all of their realtor partners. And certainly realtor partners can uh, can share that with their with their customers as well as the intention is to to help people get those credit scores up so we can get them into homes. Great. If there's nothing else, listen, I'll wish you all. We, we do, an, we actually, we do, we do have a, one coming in here. Michelle Whaley, you've been unmuted if you'd like to ask your question. Help people get those credit scores up so we can get them into homes. Great. If there's something else, listen, I'll wish Hey, you Michelle, you, you, have the, uh, you have the con. It looks like you're listening uh, maybe on a delay, but Michelle, if you'd like to ask your question. Hey, I'm not, can you hear me? Yep. Hey, Michelle. Um, I wanted to know whether. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> hey, um, just wanted to know in an effort to not blow up the um, loan officers, is there a way to get a status update? On loans that are in process, Michelle? Okay. Um, just wanted to know in an effort to not okay it sounds like she might be listening on facebook live so she's getting that 10 seconds yeah, delay, Michelle, but just yeah in terms of in terms of um updates we're business as usual so if you need anything just email your loan officers like you normally would if it's something outside of a transaction that's in process you're welcome to send those to um your loan officer um you know any of the folks i know that um and i appreciate all the support you've given us over the years as well but I'm, I'm, you can copy me on anything you'd like to uh, to send, patrick.flood at supremelending.com, and I'd be happy to complement any response that comes back. But in terms of transactions in the pipeline, our team is business as usual, and they're on their game. So whatever you need, I'm um, assuring you that we'll take care of it. All right, Pat, I think that's it for questions. Perfect. Listen, you all have an awesome week. Keep the um, faith and keep um, hope alive. All's going to be good. The road to recovery, we're on it. Talk to you soon. Okay.